Hi, I'm Simon McDowell. I am a specialist in Wellington, New Zealand. Um, I work in the field of um, reproductive endocrinology, which is a very fancy term uh, for a fertility specialist, uh, and I'm also a laparoscopic surgeon who specialises in endometriosis. So look, I feel um, thrilled to be able to talk to you about uh, two things which I uh, help women out a lot with, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome and endometriosis. And the key question I've been asked is, uh, what is the link, uh, or is there a link between the two? Is there a link? Well, the short answer is no, there isn't. Uh, the only similarity between the conditions is that they both are quite common, uh, and they both uh, are in women of reproductive age, meaning that they're between their first period and their last period. So why is there so much confusion? Well, a uh, part of it is, as I said, because people don't quite understand um, what the disorders are, and I'd like to talk about them uh, one at a time. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, or the more common uh, terminology used is PCOS or PCOS. Um, it is very, very common. Um, uh, as well as many as 12-15% um, of women may suffer from PCOS. Um, what is it? It's, it's a syndrome, and what that means is that there's a collection of symptoms and signs which women may have, but you don't need all of them to have the disorder. It's not a disorder which is diagnosed solely on a blood test or an ultrasound scan. Um, uh, a wee while back, um, it was realised that around the world uh, that the diagnostic criteria was so vague for PCOS that it was just making more confusion. And in Rotterdam, um, a group of experts around the world in the 1990s sat down and all agreed on what we should call this or what it is. And what they what they agreed on or the consensus criteria was that you need two of three things to have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, one is a irregular periods or absent periods. The second is evidence of high androgens or high male hormones and that can exhibit itself through hirsutism or abnormal hair growth, really oily, oily greasy skin um, or blood tests showing um, high levels of the male hormones androgens. Okay. Um, the third one is an ultrasound scan showing what we call polycystic ovaries. Now that is the bit which I think is most confusing, okay? Because um, polycystic uh, sounds terrible. It sounds like you've got these uh, serious cysts on the ovaries, which you know need to be cut out before they before they burst or, or cause problems. But what we're talking about is actually follicles. Okay, um, now a follicle is a tiny wee little cyst on the ovary, measuring between about. Two, 2 to 10 millimetres and it contains an egg so the, the, the eggs are housed within the follicles. On the outside of the follicle is all the cells that produce oestrogen and progesterone, uh, which are those key hormones women need to regulate menstrual cycles and be able to achieve pregnancy. Okay, So poly means many and cystic we actually mean follicles not the cysts we all worry about. So another way to look at it is many eggs. Okay. So going back to those criteria, the two of the three things, um, the least useful uh, of the three is actually the ultrasound scan. And the reason being is many women have lots of eggs. Okay, Women who are in their early 20s or, or, or in their teens, they base, all of those women will have polycystic ovaries and ultrasound scan. Essentially they have lots of eggs because they're young. So when we're looking at the consensus criteria, well, we actually can't rely on an ultrasound scan at all for women in their early 20s or in their teens. So to summarise, polycystic ovarian syndrome is a common disorder affecting women of reproductive age, so basically between their first period and their last period. It is essentially where there's lots of eggs, so there's a high number of eggs, which in a way is a good problem to have, um, and it's where you potentially get a high number, a high amount of male hormones, androgens, and that can affect the, the delicate cyclical um, balance of hormones, it can impact on the regularity of cycles, um, it can also contribute to difficulty conceiving, and, and that's through ovulation, women with PCOS may ovulate less frequently if at all than others. Um, it's not diagnosed solely on a blood test or on an ultrasound scan. It's really looking at the overall picture and uh, the diagnosis is made using the Rotterdam consensus criteria where you need two of those three things we talked about. Okay, So polycystic ovarian syndrome is also um, something that women should be aware of because it is associated with some potential long-term health consequences.
pain. Um, woman with polycystic ovarian syndrome may have difficulty getting pregnant, and that's through ovulation. They're just not potentially not ovulating as frequently, if at all, compared to other women. Um, many, many women with polycystic ovarian syndrome will have no trouble getting pregnant whatsoever, and it may be they're ovulating regularly. Okay. Um, the second um, issue, a um, woman with PCOS may have uh, menstrual um, problems. Uh, they may have an erratic or heavy bleeding and, and that can be you know, quite troublesome. Um, and generally those are controlled with hormonal therapy, things like the oral contraceptive pill or even a marina, which is a device which sits inside the uterus and helps thin out that lining. Um, women with PCOS uh, may have long-term health consequences. Um, they can be uh, predisposed to developing type 2 diabetes, um, heart disease through high cholesterol, um, and also um, abnormal cellular activity in the uterus, something called endometrial hyperplasia. And that can predispose to women um, developing cancer um, over a long period of time. Um, for those reasons, for women, um, we do uh, like them to have uh, a period every three to four months, okay? Um, every three to four months, and that is basically giving them a break from chronic estrogen stimulation of the lining, and that can help protect that lining. Um, many women with polycystic ovarian syndrome may have increased weight, and weight loss will often help with um, the symptoms that the woman's are describing. Um, so those lifestyle things, um, women with abnormal hairiness, which is very troubling if it doesn't um, respond to very simple treatment, um, such as a special kind of oral contraceptive pill um, uh, or um, just simple cosmetic measures. Uh, there are some anti-androgen therapy or more sort of heavy duty medical treatment um, which can be helpful. Okay. Um, all women with PCOS, we would recommend um, having um, a check up with their GP every two years, uh, looking at doing a diabetes check and a cholesterol check and addressing those lifestyle factors. The last thing about PCOS is, is that women can find um, have increased uh, mood problems and anxiety, and a lot of those are because of the symptoms they're describing. Um, and you know, general well-being and mental well-being is something that that, that also needs to be addressed. What is endometriosis? Well, it is totally different to polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay, it can grow um, in the areas behind the ovaries or something called the uterocycle ligaments, which tether the uterus to sort of the tailbone. Uh, it can grow in the pouch of Douglas, which is the top of the vagina, but on the inside. It can even grow um, on the bladder or all within the ovaries. Okay, so that can cause inflammation and scarring and pain, um, which can get um, flared up around the time of menstruation, especially that premenstrual period. Okay, and those are classic signs, and not every woman will have classic symptoms of endometriosis. Um, it can, uh, like polycystic ovarian syndrome, there is very much a, a, a wide spectrum, and where women sit as as, as individual. Um, so endometriosis is, is, is not associated with a high or a low egg supply. Um, if anything, someone with PCOS may, sorry, with endometriosis may have a reduced egg supply um, through disease affecting the um, ovaries, where um, cysts on the ovaries can, um, you know, damage the egg supply. Um, it's certainly not associated with a high egg supply, which is classically what women with polycystic ovarian syndrome have. Okay. Um, so why is there confusion? Why do people um, think about there being a leak? I've got a link. I've got these two, you know, these two disorders, and, and they're related. Well, you can absolutely have both disorders. Okay. Um, you know, and I think the the main reason why there can sometimes be some confusion is that both disorders of reproductive age women, as I talked about, women from you know between their first period and their last period of reproductive age, um, and both are common and increasingly um, being diagnosed, uh, I, I believe through increased awareness uh, for both um, uh, women and, um, and clinicians. Okay, um, but having PCOS doesn't protect you from endometriosis, it doesn't make you more likely to get it, and having endometriosis doesn't mean you're more likely to have polycystic ovarian syndrome, or, or again be protected um, from it. Okay, um, so I hope that's helpful. I hope uh, that explains um, some things. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak. I uh, hope this has been helpful. I've certainly enjoyed myself. It's uh, two topics I'm very passionate about and, and always very keen to talk about it. But, you know, any opportunity. Take care.